For many years, Samsung's flagship phones have always sort of fallen in the middle of the road when it comes to their cameras, at least in my opinion. However, I think this is the year that all of that changes. Today, we're gonna to compare the new S23 Ultra's cameras to the iPhone 14 Pro and see which one comes out on top. We've got pictures of architecture, pictures of people, night mode shots, pet shots, food shots, and lots more. So buckle in and let's see which camera is better. First up, we're gonna compare the outdoor shots. This is the area that I'm expecting the least amount of differences given that you know, most cameras fare pretty well outdoors and these are both at the top of their game. Both pictures are pretty great. Samsung goes for a, a touch more of a vibrant look, which I do prefer given the colors of the buildings here. Whereas the iPhone has a bit more of a muted, maybe a more realistic look. The interesting thing about this picture is that the iPhone has determined that the sky should have a bit of a blue tinge to it, even though this was a perfectly gray overcast day that this picture was shot on. If we switch to a different building, we see the exact same thing, blue tinged sky and much more muted colors. It's personal preference, obviously, but I'm liking the way that the Samsung handles these shots a little bit more, so I'm gonna give the slight edge to the Samsung on this one. Just for kicks, I also switched the S23 Ultra into the 200 megapixel mode for this picture, and the amount of detail it captured across the frame was just ridiculous. You can read the signs on the door easily, and I can even make out the detail in this woman's face, even though she was way into the background. Do I think that most people will use this mode? No, most people are just gonna open the camera app and take all of their pictures in the regular pixel binned mode. But hey, from a technical standpoint, it is pretty impressive. The other thing that Samsung does really well that might be useful if you're shooting outdoors is their huge 10X optical zoom. In this shot of the old courthouse, I can get real up close and personal with that clock tower without losing any detail at all. To get the same shot on the iPhone, I'd have to use the 3X telephoto and then zoom in digitally. So let's move indoors for a few minutes and this is where it gets interesting. This time it's the iPhone's turn to be the more vibrant one. You can see that the iPhone has also gone ahead and focused its HDR efforts around the face. And to me, I like the overall look of the iPhone's picture over the Samsung's. Samsung's image might be a little bit more technically accurate, but the iPhone's is more pleasing in my opinion. Samsung talked a bit about how they've improved dynamic range in the S23 Ultra. And you can see that here in this picture very clearly. This is a very tough picture for any camera to take. I can't stress that enough. It's a scene against a bright window where the subject is backlit and the iPhone 14 Pro is struggling to both keep the foreground properly exposed without blowing out that background. The S23 Ultra on the other hand is doing a much better job keeping that exposure on the building in the background in check. Although the sky has still been lost, so it's not perfect. Here's the thing though. Neither of these cameras are perfectly consistent when it comes to backlit subjects. In this shot of my Oppo Find N2, it's the iPhone that clearly comes out on top in both colors and exposure. So I don't think I can give either of these phones a clear win. Food tells a different story. Samsung's overzealous nature with making things vibrant actually ends up making the food look more appealing on the plate. However, that huge 200 megapixel sensor actually ends up doing it a disservice when you look at the corners of the plate and see that some of the food are actually just out of focus because of that narrow depth of field. On the other side of things, Samsung's minimum focusing distance on the main camera of the S23 Ultra is just way better than the one on the iPhone. I consistently have trouble taking pictures of nearby objects with the iPhone because it always just switches to the ultra wide camera on me, which ends up looking way worse for objects held at arm's reach. Before we look at the night and the portrait mode shots I took, I first need to take a quick minute to thank the sponsor of this video, Casetify. Casetify is incredibly well known for their great looking and ultra protective phone cases. I've got some cases for both my S23 and my S23 Ultra, and I gotta say, these look amazing. This impact retro themed gaming case has been living on the S23 Ultra, and with the cream color of the phone, going through, this case really pops. More importantly though, with the 8.2 foot impact absorption on the impact case or the 11.5 foot absorption on my ultra impact case, my expensive phones are extremely well protected. The impact case has four times the military grade standard and the ultra impact case has five times the military grade standard. So even if the phone manages to slip out of my hand, I'm not worried about it. They've got a raised lip for screen protection too, but if that isn't enough for you, they also sell tempered glass screen protectors for even more peace of mind. Now, if you really wanna wear this like the piece of art that it is, Casetify sells phone straps too, so that you can keep your phone around your neck or your wrist. There are thousands of prints that you can choose from on their store so that you can rock something that is uniquely you. Click the link in the video description below and get 15% off your order from Casetify today. 
All right, so after grabbing some food, I took the phones into a dark museum to get some night mode shots. And some of these were a little hard to judge. Some were a complete toss up, but on the whole, I think that the shots from the S23 Ultra were a little bit better, especially in areas where high dynamic range was important. In this picture with the bright red building with the light shining directly on it, the iPhone clips the highlights on the sign and the wooden siding, whereas the S23 Ultra is able to retain all of that detail. This picture was really interesting to me. Now, I take this picture on a lot of the phones I test because it says a lot about what the phone chooses to focus on with its post-processing efforts. The iPhone decided to crank the contrast up to 11 in this picture, and with all of the textures present in the skidoo and the wall, I think it ends up drawing your eye in a little bit more when side to side with the Samsung. However, I will say that again, Samsung has the more technically impressive picture here. The highlights are better controlled and the colors are more accurate on the S23 Ultra. Which you think is better is ultimately up to you. If you'd prefer photos that you don't have to touch up at all, then the iPhone might have taken the better picture here. But if you want a photo that is better controlled and has more potential for editing, you might go with the S23 Ultra's photo. Now how about portrait mode? That seems to be the people's choice for favorite favorite modes these days, and both of these phones do very well, but there's a clear winner for this photo in my opinion, and again, it's the S23 Ultra. The portrait mode on the selfie camera is wider, it has the cleaner cutout between the foreground and background, the colors are better, and the overall image is sharper on the S23 Ultra's photo. I also flipped the camera around to take some portrait mode shots of Monty too, and I found the same sorts of things. Samsung software is doing some serious work with the edge detection of these photos. It's not always perfect, but it's really close. The only thing I didn't like was the shutter lag that was present when taking some of these pictures. It is really hard to get a good picture of a dog that's playing with a toy with the S23 Ultra. There's a slight, like maybe half a second lag sometimes when taking the picture. And this was something that was present on past Samsung phones too. They just don't seem to have fixed it yet. Okay, let's go to video. Here's where the tables turn on the S23 Ultra. While I don't think that Samsung's video modes are bad, I still think that the iPhone has a leg up on them. The colors and contrast are both better on the iPhone when it comes to video, and the detail in the ProRes video just takes it to the next level. The only advantage that the Samsung has in video is that optical zoom, which goes way, way further than the iPhone and retains detail a lot better. It still isn't as smooth as the iPhone, though, it's a bit choppy as you switch between the lenses, but still, that 10x optical zoom is a lot of fun to play with. One thing I really wanted to test on the new S23 Ultra was the portrait video mode from the front-facing camera, in case anybody wanted to do some vlogging. So we're going to start with the S23 Ultra first, and then we're going to move over to the iPhone 14 Pro to compare. And this is what that exact same shot looks like on the iPhone 14 Pro in cinematic mode. Let me know what you think in the comments. Did the iPhone 14 Pro win, or did the S23 Ultra win? Let me know. So here's what I think. First of all, I don't think you can go wrong with either of these phones when it comes to the camera systems. I mean, they both have the capability to take very, very impressive photos and videos. But I'm gonna have to give an overall win to the S23 Ultra. I think it deserves it. If I wanted a phone that could do it all and do it all well, I'd choose this one. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.